Okay. Um, first and foremost, I want to thank um, Ravindra, my good friend of more than 35 years, and also the other organizing uh, members of this exciting opportunity to reach across the globe and present uh, some of the work that my team and I have been working on. And the idea that I wanted to kind of in a way present in here is a vision for textile reinforced concrete structural sections. And I want to kind of in a way present to you the, uh, the opportunities that is available to us to reconsider the structural materials based on the challenges that we have. And I realize that resiliency is a major issue in this conference and I want to kind of in a way um, address some of the topics that we can bring to the table. But the first- Marzin, uh, just to interrupt you, we are seeing yes. your screen in the presenter mode and not in the display mode. Oh, allow me to, okay. This is not, this is not it, right? Okay, so let me, how about this? This is fine. Okay. So, um, um, this is an introductory st um, uh, slide that I often use to point out the three, time sc three uh, scales of time, length, and also disciplines, the opportunities that lies ahead for us in the context of cement-based materials. From time point of view, we're interested in basically starting from seconds up to centuries that the long-term performance of the material is expected. So from hydration, early age, service life, long-term performance, we need to understand cement-based materials. From a length scale, we need to look at them from nanometers to kilometers. So that's about, again, about 11 orders of magnitude that we're interested to design it. And then as far as the disciplines are concerned, uh, we are kind of in a way, some of the most broadest area of science kind of fits in the area of cement-based and construction materials, where we have to look at chemistry, mechanics, material science, manufacturing products, and also structural mechanics design. So the opportunities are boundless. And that's one of the areas of success that we've had in order to start addressing some of the common problems. And I want to point out the issue of social justice. The idea that I believe that a safe and secure shelter is a human right. And we need to develop alternative construction products simply because of the fact that um, the energy cost, the raw materials that we have, and at the same time, the population density is changing so much that we really can't afford to be um, using the materials in a traditional sense and traditional way. At the same time, when we look at issues such as global warming, um, it is a global problem. All of us, whether you have um, the type of hurricanes or the type of floods and uh, also the temperature requirements, the increase in temperature, and the fact that 97% of the energy used in buildings is associated with uh, the heating and cooling of the buildings, we need to develop materials that are resistant to uh, and provide the address, uh, provide solution to our problem. So this, uh, from a sustainable construction products point of view, we have two major opportunities. One of them is the social challenges that sustainability puts forward as far as global warming and you know some of the societal developments that we have to address. Reuse, recycle, use of blended cements and also optimizing the amount of concrete that we use. That's an issue I will try to point out in my talk. And then design for durability and quality control. We really need to address these areas. From the other side, we go back to my own traditional training, which is structural mechanics and materials and we really need to go back and see if we can redesign the concrete materials using some of the innovative approaches such as fiber reinforced concrete or textile reinforced concrete to see how we can better design these materials using ductility based designs in terms of 
um, in terms of strength and ductility? And how can we design it for a life cycle that we can reliably use it? So to focus, uh, textile reinforced concrete, what we want to look at it is basically from three different perspectives. One of them is the material design, which is a ductility-based design. We want to be able to design it for all extra demanding type of applications in the context of seismic impact, earthquake, um, and durability, safety. So we want to be able to kind of, in a way, everything that we want to worry about, we want to be able to address it in here. At the same time, we want to minimize the amount of cement and concrete. We want to kind of, in a way, use of the order of 10 to 20 percent of the cement in order to carry the load. And that's a really tall order, but I believe that it's possible to do it with innovative cementitious materials. Now, when we talk about the ideas, the durability problem and the metal reinforcement is a major problem in cement-based materials because of the uh, ionic diffusivity, the corrosion problem. So I'm personally interested in just completely going with non-metal type of reinforcements and actually trying to use polymeric or um, even other sources of fibers. But I'm very much interested personally in the cheapest types of reinforcements that we can get and polymeric fibers end up being on the, on, the, um, on the cusp of things. Um, and then the idea basically always goes back to the economy and how can we make it cheaper? How can we save on the rebars and the associated costs? Why do we have to have approximately 50 millimeters of cover for concrete that we ignore? And I wanna ask the audience one question. Uh, there would be a riot if we told the society that somewhere about 50% of the concrete that we design as a reinforced concrete, it's in tension and we ignore the tension. In other words, we carry all of that weight, but we never use it in our design. So the major idea that we wanna push is to be able to design cement-based materials for their tensile load carrying capacity, however small they may be. But the idea is not to go with ultra high performance concrete of carrying 120 to 150 megapascals. The idea is to design with concrete that can carry 10 to 15 megapascals only in tension. Because once we carry it in tension, combine it with compression, and now we can carry flexural loads, shear loads, and many other types of uh, preventing the type of cracking that occurs. So three areas that I would try to kind of in a way address with about four or five slides each. One of them is materials design. How do we design the TRC materials components? How do we manufacture them? Then the next topic is mechanical properties. How do we characterize what are the, what is the areas of interest that we have in the context of um, measurement of properties and finally what are the tools that we have to develop in the area of structural design um, in the and so th these basically tries to kind of in a way rewrite the book on how do we make the new cement based materials and how do we design it? because the traditional uh, rectangular uh, Whitney's stress diagram is not going to cut it because right off the bat we have to assume that tension is ignored and we want to include the tension in our design. So textile reinforced concrete, very simply stated, it takes very low cost equipment setup to manufacture. We can automate it, but the idea is to start with some um, textile material impregnated with cement paste. And of course the whole entire chemistry of the cement paste can be changed pass it through certain rollers and form it into specific shapes, whether it's pipes or closed sections or I-beams or so forth. But the idea here, the one that we have, is to um, kind of reinforce it with the reinforcement polymers as shown in here, where the interlocking effect of the warp and fill yarns in the textile provides that anchorage of the fibers and allows for the load to be carried. And once we do that, now we can have different types of fabric systems. And the key parameter here is that we have reduced the flaw size, potential flaw size in the cement-based materials. So now what we can do compared to mortar on this diagram, which shows the stress strain response of the sample, and the mortar goes up to about three megapascal. Now what we can do is to allow for tension to carry 
and the material ca may carry with, let's say, alkaloid-resistant glass fabric up to about 18, 20, and we've gone up to 50 megapascal with different formulations. And poly polyethylene fabric or e-glass fabric, it can significantly surpass the strain capacity, 4% strain. But the process here produces significant number of cracks in the sample. The cracks would reduce the stiffness of the sample, and the stiffness basically allows us to carry um, the energy and dissipate the energy. So in a nutshell, textile reinforced concrete is a material that's highly tolerant of deformation, and we have spent a great deal of time trying to characterize the stress-strain response or tension properties, type of a bilinear response where you can kind of in a way measure the crack distribution in different zones here. And by having a knowledge of the crack distribution, you can actually set up a stiffness matrix for it and kind of in a way do structure analysis. We have tried with different types of fabrics as far as single yarn, multi-yarn that are bonded, or knitted yarn. So the area of textile manufacturing, which is already an extremely mature area, can help us bring it into construction. And once we start working with textile industry, we can actually make them quite, quite reasonable, economical, and fit for the applications that we have. Some of the exciting areas now are 3D textiles, where the textiles are woven with the near net shape, final shape. So that way we can make a channel or a pipe or a structural member such an angle or such or a channel based on the woven geometry of the textile. And these are the areas that I would really look forward to finding collaborators, um, you know, knowing even India being so strong in the area of textile manufacturing. Um, I think these are areas that we should all look into these types of opportunities. But from a cement-based material, we go back to the traditional mechanics. And then so the idea is to characterize the stress-strain response 6% strain shown in here with about 20 megapascal tensile strain. So from an earthquake point of view, from a ductility point of view, these materials are just ideal. As the sample is cracking, there is a significant amount of uh, the crack spacing decreases. And with having a knowledge of how, what the spacing of the cracks are, we can actually define constitutive material models that can be easily set into a finite element type. Um, we have spent uh, significant time in trying to understand what are the modes of toughening mechanism. The debonding of the yarns, the debonding of the fibers is quite an important energy absorption mechanism. So as the crack hits a fiber, it has to go around the fiber and propagate. And this going around the fiber increases the length of the crack in this, uh, in this direction. So again, a lot of studies has kind of in a way focused on understanding these materials, fluctual response. We see that once the sample is loaded, there is a lot of deformation that happens and stores significant amount of energy as it fails. So from an impact point of view, it is quite nice. We have looked at polypropylene type fibers. And what we realize is that the smaller the fiber type that we make, as far as microfibers of the order of 40 to 50 microns in size, actually we can get much, much better. So these are some of the pictures of microfibers. We can get really enhanced bond properties because the fiber's surface area has been increased. It's not just like a macrofiber. So these two uh, curves here show the tension response of macrofibers versus microfibers. And the microfibers have, you know, almost 60% ex extension and uh, the ductility is very interesting. Interface properties are also of our interest. Basically, how do we bond the fibers? How do we develop surface um, components or surface compositions to treat the fibers so that the bond issue is addressed? And so these are all in the material science area of it. So then we go to two woven type of textiles. The idea is to just manufacture the textiles with an opening that can take in the cement material, cement paste in there. And now we go through a protrusion type of a setup where we start with a fabric roll, we go through a water bath as shown in here. Then we go through a cement paste, we go through rollers, and then we have a tractor mechanism that grabs and pulls the fiber. So this is an automated protrusion setup. At the end, we have a press that allows us to kind of in a way make stack these laminates and form them 
into a shape. Once we make the sample, so these are just some plain samples, we have to look at basically traditional engineering. This basically comes in the area of, let's say, steel design. What is the strength of a bolt? What are the failure of a system in, this, in these modes? So these are some of the characterization work that we are doing in terms of how do we connect these elements? Um, and at the same time, with polymeric fibers, now we're going up to about 15 to 20 megapascal again, but 15% strain capacity. Of course, whether we use the type of tricot or open weave, the penetration mechanisms affect the overall stiffness of the system. And you know, here we have about three to 4% fibers, um, but they are much, much more economical than or carbon um, um, type of systems. We've done a lot of high-speed testing basically from an impact characterization point of view. So this is a sort of hydraulic test system that we can go up to about strain rates of what, um, 200 per second. Um, and there are some videos, but I wasn't sure if I would wanted to kind of in a way show the videos because of the uh, you know, transmission and such, but I'll, I'll be happy to, I have some of those videos on our website uh, that, that can be shared. Um, one of the areas that we use is characterization by means of digital image correlation. Digital image correlation takes pictures of the sample under load and allows us to kind of in a way measure the strain distribution. So the red areas are kind of in a way the cracks and the opening of the cracks and the purple areas are just basically plain matrix. So if you're comparing short glass fibers with a glass composite fabric, what we can see is that with a short fiber, there is only one crack that forms and opens, whereas in a composite type of a system with textile, we get multiple cracks and these multiple cracks kind of in a way work. And that's kind of in a way explains why the strain capacity is so much higher in the case of a textile system at the same strain rate compared to a short fiber composite system. Um, a lot, of, a lot of our work, again, goes back into this area of trying to characterize the debonding of the fibers and how the debonding pullout kind of in a way works to, to be able to optimize the system in terms of the weave pattern. So we kind of monitor every single crack and try to develop constitutive response based on that in the context of crack width measurement because durability ultimately is related to the crack width that we have in these samples. So basically a lot of quantitative measurements and modeling simulation, but ultimately our goal is to be able to start from a single crack and saturate the specimen with cracks when the load is applied. So that's kind of, kind of in a way optimizing how much, how much damage tolerant the material is. Next topic of course goes into structural shape. So we're interested in making kind of in a way is lightweight, light gauge steel or light, uh, compete with light gauge steel or wood uh, as a construction material. So can we make cement based materials that would be kind of in a way very similar in nature to the construction methodology that we have uh, using steel or wood? And the answer is again, using the same approach that we had for the, for the system um, for protrusion it would work. So now we're working with W sections and angles and such, developing equations for performance and the characteristics, at the same time developing approaches for how do we connect these sections. So these are basically structure, traditional structural engineering work that we're working on to calculate the structural shape performance. Finally, uh, okay, so of course, another one, sandwich composites, we can make a light gate, light, light core, aerated concrete core with two layers of textile. And now the performance is a sandwich composite where the strength kind of in a way goes more than five times and ductility more than 20 times is increased by making sandwich composites. Very thermally resistant, fire resistant, and at the same time, um, lightweight type of structural systems. On the modeling, basically we have three steps that we approach. First is materials evaluation that I talked quite a bit about. Then there is the question of structural design and uh, calculation of the serviceability criteria. So the methodology that we use in here is based on a dual type of an approach of fracture-based models and plasticity-based models where stress crack width relationship or stress strain relationship is obtained from standard tests that we conduct, we calculate moment curvature relationship, 
and apply it to the specific geometry that we may have and use that for design. So this approach kind of in a way allows us to um, design any kind of a structural system with the basic core material tests that we do. And the idea is to kind of in a way design a nonlinear hinge with all of the characteristics where a single crack that forms in there, as, as I mentioned, we have multiple cracks. That single crack can be formulated in the context of a reinforced concrete, fiber reinforced concrete, textile reinforced concrete, or another area that we're interested in is hybrid reinforced concrete, the combination of fibers and textiles with the traditional rebar type of a design. And all of the parameters that we need in here are defined in the terms of the moment curvature and also axial relationship of a fluctual type of an element. The approach that we use um, is based on using a parameterized approach, meaning that we assume a tension stress strain response using parameters that are all related by means of um, constants uh, that can be applied to an intrinsic parameter, which is first cracking, both for tension and compression. Everything is, multi is, is linear uh, or uh, multilinear sections. And what this allows us to do is to solve for the moment curvature relationship in the context of a closed form solution. So we obtain moment curvatures in terms of closed form solutions that allows us to use the curvature diffraction relationship by means of simple integration of the moment curvature. And since everything is defined in the context of linear relationship, integrations becomes all of them closed form. Then we use traditional yield line theory and calculate the basically um, by means of limit state analysis, we can design different type of configurations. The idea is to avoid finite elements because we can't afford in a design office to be setting up a finite element model for every single application. So if we can develop closed form solutions from the material models, we can then also address the serviceability because once we set up the material models, then we can integrate them and we can actually stop the loading at any specific strain that we would want. So this is some similar cases where we just basically generate the moment curvature relationship uh, from the traditional approach using closed form solutions, input the material properties that we have from the testing there, and we get the exact material that can go into a structural analysis type of an approach. So basically a simplified model goes into a finite element, it goes into a structural analysis, and now we can calculate the load deflection. So this, this entire approach of statics where moment and load um, uh, kind of provides us the load and moment curvature gives us the deflection by integration and we get the load deflection of any type of a structure that we would have. So these we have kind of published in this area as far as how do we design these systems from a serviceability criteria and those approaches are all available. So these are some examples that, you know, how do we design round panels or rectangular slabs for water tank or for a pipe or a floor system. So all of these approaches have been done using the experimental verifications that we've done with a parameterized type of an approach of for a, from a moment curvature point of view that gives us the load deflection. At this uh, point, I mean, you know, just basically a lot of our work comes into kind of a standard approach where we have the models, we try to simulate experiments that others have done or experiments that we have done and kind of streamline our design uh, methodology. Finally, I believe that textile reinforced composites provide a wide range of materials that we can design. The polymeric materials are a tremendous opportunity for us. Uh, to, to design them with, but then the traditional structure analysis approaches also allow us to develop closed form solutions that can allow us to design one dimensional, two dimensional fluxual members for this exciting area that we have. Finally, I have to kind of in a way push a couple of books that we have worked on uh, with my colleagues Alva Pellet and Arnon Bentour, and also one by myself on the areas of fiber and textile reinforced concrete. And I'll be more than happy to um, entertain any questions you would have. And then at the same time, invite you to come visit us in Arizona, spend some time. We have some beautiful nature and I would love to show that to you. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, appreciate the uh, professor 
Bazin Bobashir about a very interesting uh, research presentation. And then I can see there are many questions in the YouTube website. And also we can see a couple of questions from audience in the Zoom software. <clears throat> okay. So first question, I think we have a couple of minutes. So first question, can you elaborate on the stress strain behavior of TRC on the cycling loading? Um, yes, basically there is damage involved in, in, the, in the sample. And um, the idea is that we would lose the significant amount of the stiffness. The initial stiffness is not recoverable. However, the ductility that the material has allows us to kind of in a way go through. Uh, we've done tests up to 2 million cycles, fatigue testing intention of TRC materials. And some of the results are very supportive of the fact that um, the, the, the cracking region basically can be reliably used in a structural design because we have validated it with up to about 2 million cycles of fatigue. Mm, okay, so the professor get to uh, left two questions. So first question okay. is, uh, do, do you think concentrated plastic hinge approach a center is better than the distributed plastic hinge in modeling plastic hinges in TRC. I think he's asking about the yield line theory analysis. And the yeah, his second yes. question I'm, is, uh, yeah. yeah, please. Yeah, okay, I believe that it helps us because what we see in a lot of the tests that we have conducted, um, basically um, you have a localization effect that we get because of one main hinge that occurs. But the goal that we should have here is to kind of avoid a single hinge formation and design the material in an indeterminate structure type of a system so that we can have multiple yield hinges that are forming. And um, that is basically maximizing the efficiency of the material where we're kind of in a way developing it. And I, and I think from a structural analysis point of view, it is an elegant method and very cheap method because very quickly we can get some answers from a design point of view. Again, I'm not interested in very large structural systems, which are, but I'm more interested in construction materials for homes and single family homes or the type of, uh, you know, building facades and energy absorbent materials that can be used for common, for common people. Mm -hmm. So personally, it is very interesting to see the multi-scale level approach from the material design, the, the behavior at the material level, and then to yes. implement it in the structural design to realize the new types of composite. But uh, another interesting question from the Professor Getu is, is about the fire resistance of the TRC because yes. you are talking about the home, the house application and small scale application. So can you yes. uh, share your um, thoughts? Yes, basically, if, you, if you're interested in going into the area of fire resistance, one of the main areas that we tried to investigate was with aerated concrete. So basically we have a layer of aerated concrete sandwich, sandwich type systems, and we have done some tests of more than four hours fire rating, whereas in majority of the type of light, light construction systems, we only needed to meet a two hour um, fire rating. Um, the, uh, so basically the idea is that there is 80% uh, closed pore system um, in the aerated type system, and that would provide the type of, you know, the type of fire resistance that we would desire. But so all of those technologies can be definitely set up to be addressed. As far as sound transmission, um, with aerated concrete, those systems work out quite well. Okay. So <clears throat> my personal, I'm personally, I'm thinking about, uh, I'm always wondering about the cost. You mentioned about the different types of polymeric fiber, PP or PE or PBA. Yes. What is your thought on the, the um, in terms of the cost the, if, of the yes. uh, performance? If we look at, if we look at the, let's say polymeric fiber, like, PP fiber, they, over the last 20 years, polymeric fibers have become dominant commercial type of a fiber that is used for floor systems, for cracking, even for structural type applications. What we do in here is to just simply use those fibers not in a not chopped form. So first they are drawn, they're chopped and used in concrete. What we are saying is that instead of chopping them, form them into a textile, 
which would have some level of cost associated with it. But again, the textile industry is extremely mature and they can really make any type of a system, with, whether it's knitted or bonded, and we can make that. So the cost of making textiles, especially if you look at it from an industrial production scale, it is not as significant. Um, but I personally prefer going working with polymeric fibers than carbon fibers or, you know, alkali resistant glass or, um, you know, any other type of, I mean, we can use even metal meshes like steel mesh, uh, but then we have to worry about the corrosion problem. Uh, one area I didn't mention uh, in this talk was the area of repair and retrofit, um, extending the service life of older buildings. You mentioned about the apartment buildings in Korea. It's very possible to bring them up to date as far as new earthquake code, because you can actually make a sandwich on the existing structures with maybe a five to 10, 10 millimeter thick layer of TRC type of a material, which is very easy to apply. And there is a lot of opportunity in this area as well that we should significantly be looking at. And Rylem, um, you know, uh, Rylem also has two committees interested in area of uh, textile reinforced concrete. And I really urge people who are interested to join Rylem and um, participate with us because we're looking for applications. We're looking for people who take this technology forward. Okay, so uh, thank you, Professor Mobasher, for sharing thank your you. thought and uh, providing us, us some very important insight and very exciting talk. So due thank to the time limitation, I think yes. we have to move on to the next speaker. Yes. <clears throat> next speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, thank you very much, Professor. Yes. Thank you.